All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Boost Your Brain. My name is Isabel Hinton, and I'm a health educator with Bronson, part of the community health team. And I am very excited for you all to be here. We have a pretty full class today, so there might be a few more people trickling on in, but we are hopefully going to have some fun today. So, just a few housekeeping uh, rules like we usually talk about if you've ever been in our classes before. So this video is going to be recorded. So if you do not want to be on the recording, feel free to turn your camera off. You can do so by clicking the stop video um, button at the bottom of your screen. Um, also, we are offering CC, so closed captioning. So if you need closed captioning, feel free to turn that on. We have it available for you. Um, and I know that it's not 100% accurate. So if there's something that comes up on your screen that just doesn't seem right, feel free to send us a chat message and we will make sure to help clarify that for you. Ooh, woo, going way ahead of myself here already. I accidentally clicked my, uh, gonna get a sneak preview here at some of these things. <laughs> Went way too far. Hold on. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, um, closed captioning, if you need it, feel free to turn that on. Um, as far as the chat goes, we're going to have some opportunities for chat and some um, discussion. So, feel free to chat in the chat box or unmute yourself. But if we are not doing discussion, if you could keep your microphone on mute, we would really appreciate it just so we can reduce the background noise. So with that being said, we are going to jump in to our Boost Your Brain class. Okay, so like we usually start our classes, um, finding care and help at Bronson. Um, if you need help searching for a doctor or a specialist, feel free to visit bronsonhealth.com or contact a care advisor. Um, they'll be able to talk with you and work with you through any questions you have. Um, there is my chart as well. So if you need any help with my charts, uh, Health Answers can help you do that. You can send them an email or give them a call and they'll be able to help answer any questions you might have. And then finally, if you need any help with billing, our um, patient, Bronson Patient Accounting or Billing Department will help answer those questions as well. So the contact information and the names are up there for you in case you need that. So, First little uh, fun tidbit. Did you know that the brain runs on electricity, which produces enough power to light a 25 watt bulb? So a little cute little fun fact there to show how wonderful and amazing our brains are. And we're going to be doing some discussion where you guys can learn how amazing and wonderful your brains are and how you can take care of them. So I want to um, tell you what we're going to be going through today, which is discussing what intellectual wellness is, as well as what brain health is, you're going to learn some ways to take care of and boost both your intellectual and your brain health. And we're going to practice a few brain exercises or games, if you will. And then you guys will be able to leave with a list of brain health resources in case you want to do a little bit more research on your own after this conversation. So we are gonna start off our class today with a brain exercise. So um, according to, oh my goodness, according to um, this uh, journal, in order to, or if you want to sharpen your brain, focus on doing brain exercises that target some of the areas measured by IQ tests, such as working memory, executive function, and spatial reasoning. So, we are going to start our exercise with a few riddles. So if you have the answer to any of these riddles, feel free to type it in the chat, or you can unmute yourself if you want to throw a guess out there. So the first question I have for you is, what gets bigger the more you take away? Any guesses? Yes, perfect. Number one hole, that is correct. All right, riddle number two. What gets wetter the more it dries? Correct, we got a towel. Good, that is the answer. I'm liking these guesses that I'm seeing in the chat. And then finally, 
You have me today, tomorrow you'll have more. As time passes, I'm not easy to store. I don't take up space, but I'm only in one place. I am what you saw, but not what you see. What am I? This one's a little bit harder, I think. Yes, correct, that is true, a memory. Look at you guys, you are already on it and it's nine o'clock in the morning, nice work. That is correct, a memory. So that was just to kind of get your brain juices flowing as we move through the presentation. Okay, so I wanna know from you guys, you can type in the chat or you can unmute yourselves. When you hear the words intellectual wellness, what do you think of? And feel free if you wanna unmute yourself, that's totally good. Okay, holding off dementia, sound thinking, good brain function, thinking power, good memory, logical. I'm liking all these things I'm seeing in the chat. Anybody else? All right. So intellectual wellness is allowing your brain both stimulation and rest for critical thinking, curiosity, and creativity according to the University of New Hampshire. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how we can care for our intellectual wellness. So the first thing we can do to care for our intellectual wellness is to keep an open mind. So um, keeping an open mind and staying curious is a great way to improve your intellectual wellness. Now, each of us has unique perspectives. We all have our own knowledge and backgrounds and skills to share. and none of us honestly have the answers to everything. So you gotta learn to kind of broaden your perspective and look for new ways of doing things. There is always more than one way to do things, although sometimes it doesn't seem like that. I don't know if anybody ever feels that way, that their way is the right way. <laughs> I know sometimes I do when my husband and I are talking and I'm like, no, I'm right. And he says, he's right. And you know, it's one of those things. So knowing that there's always one more than one way to do things. Um, when you keep an open mind, you're curious, you seek to kind of understand, you seek first to understand, um, you actually might learn how to do something better. Being open to ideas and suggestions and other people's thoughts and opinions, because all of us are entitled to our own thoughts and opinions. And even if you don't agree with it, keeping an open mind is a great way to keep your intellectual wellness healthy. So seeking first to understand and always staying curious. All right, we've got tip number two, caring for our intellectual wellness is traveling or learning about cultures that are different than our own. Does anybody here enjoy traveling and learning about different cultures? I'm just curious, feel free to type it in the chat or shake your head or raise your hand or unmute yourself, whatever feels right for you. Yeah, it's fun to learn new things. Yes, I enjoy traveling, learning about different cultures than my own. Anybody else, yes or no, or you know, not sure or never experienced it before? Love to travel, always been interested in different cultures. Yeah, awesome. Feel free to keep on kind of flooding the chat here. So I actually used to live in Japan. I don't know how many of you on this call know that, but my husband was in the military. And so we lived in Japan for a little while and it was so wonderful learning about a culture that was different than my own. So in order to learn about new cultures, um, you got to work for it. So um, this can be done in lots of different ways. Traveling is just one of the ways it can be done. But if you can't travel or you don't like to travel or, you know, it's just not, you know, something you're able to do right now, there's lots of other ways you can still learn about cultures that are different than your own. You can um, talk with people that are of a different culture. You can watch documentaries. You can read books. You can visit markets. You can dive into literature. So there's tons of different ways that you can learn about culture. So you don't have to feel kind of pushed in this box that the only way you can learn about cultures is by traveling, because that's not true. It's great to travel and learn about different cultures, but you can also do so in lots of different ways, watching TV shows, traveling, all of that. There's so many different ways you can do that. And I see someone here um, husband and I lived in Japan for 14 months. That's awesome, Nikki. 
oh, I loved it in Japan. Oh my goodness, I miss it so much. <laughs> Trying recipes from different countries? Yes, 100%. Watching YouTube? Yes. These are all great suggestions in the chat box. So when you are um, learning about different cultures, you can really learn to humble yourself. You can take what you learn and you can go ahead and share that with other people. It's really important to kind of lift up different cultures. And when you seek to learn more about different beliefs and values and opinions and views and ways of doing things that are different than your own, you can gain an appreciation for that culture. As a society, it's really important for us to kind of immerse ourselves and get to learn about different um, cultures to help really support and move our world in a forward and positive direction. When we do those things, when we dive into these cultures and lift up other cultures, um, we're really supporting the health and well-being of ourselves and for future generations. So um, I attended a webinar the other day that was all about cultures and food, and it was such a really, really great webinar, especially because if you've ever been in our classes before, you know that we are all about food here in our community health class. And one of the things they said was, um, let me get the right quote because I wanna make sure I don't misrepresent what they said, but it was absolutely wonderful. And it really, um, it honestly really got you thinking about something. So um, food is culture and culture is food and they cannot be separated. And so like someone mentioned in the chat, trying different recipes, um, learning about different foods from other cultures is a great way to explore that as well. So. Showing curiosity and interest in different perspectives and finding ways to elevate and incorporate different cultures into our lives. That's help care for your intellectual wellness number two. All right, moving on to tip number three, trying out a new hobby. So I love hobbies. They're super fun. They are um, a great way to do so many different things. So Finding a hobby is a great way to really find yourself. They help to support continued learning. They give you an outlet. They help to expand and strengthen your skills. They can help bring joy and happiness to your life. They help to relieve stress. The list honestly goes on and on and on and on. So one of my favorite hobbies is baking cupcakes, actually, which is so funny because I am a um, health educator, but I always say there's room for everything in our diets, right? And so I really enjoy making cupcakes look beautiful. And so it's my creative outlet. Does anybody on this class have a hobby that they want to share with anybody or found a new hobby recently that they really enjoy? Feel free to type it in the chat or unmute yourselves. Cross stitch, gardening, Playing piano, wonderful. My husband tried learning piano for a little while. Gardening, yeah, sewing, sticker art. Wow, these sound really fun. Cooking, taking care of eight, oh, 28 acres. That's a, long, that's a lot of acres to take care of, but that's wonderful. Gardening, math puzzles, cricket machine, yes. My mom has a cricket and absolutely, it's so fun. Cooking, yeah, I see so many wonderful hobbies, sewing, in the chat here. That is awesome. I think hobbies are a really important thing to have and you just got to find what you like. So just like you try new foods to find what you like, it's important to try new activities to kind of find out what you like. So, so you know, kind of not ever, you know, giving up on these things because there are just hundreds of hobbies that you can choose from. So really kind of diving in and trying to explore and learn a little bit more about you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you everybody so much for sharing. Okay. Caring for intellectual wellness, tip number four. So <clears throat> during the first part of your life, your brain was growing, developing, learning. Um, <clears throat> you may have spent time in school, learned new things like how to tie your shoes, how to read, how to do math problems, how to drive, how to cook. Um, so many different things that you learned while you were growing up, right? So according to Harvard Health, during the first part of your life, your brain is building what scientists call cognitive reserve. The cognitive reserve links the dense networks of connections between brain cells. These experiences and learning helps to build and maintain connectivity. 
experience and learning build and maintain the connectivity. Dr. Fabini says that learning new things is really important because you're using mental skills that you would not otherwise, when you're actually learning something, you're creating new neural pathways. So you can totally learn so many new things. You could take a class and to learn new skills, or you could take up music or arts or language or word working, uh, woodworking. So whatever suits your needs. I recently decided that I wanted to learn a new language. And so for the past about month or so, I have been learning Spanish. So I just take a few minutes each day to try and learn Spanish. And it's hard. <laughs> it's hard because I only took Spanish for like a few years in high school. And that was a long time ago. And so, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, uh, to learn these things, but I've been really enjoying it. And while I'm learning these new things, I'm creating those new neural pathways. So it's a great way to take care of your intellectual wellness, to try and learn new skills. I see someone here says line dancing, Tai Chi and meditation. Yeah, those are great things to learn and both hobbies as well. So learning new things is just really honestly quite fun. You just got to find something that you enjoy and that you want to learn. So you keep with it and keep learning. All right. Tip number five, making sure that you are reading about and doing research on topics that interest you. So <laughs> when you dive into credible research, you are allowing yourself to discover new ways of doing things and about different um, topics that you might have not known much about, or maybe you thought you knew a lot about, and then you want to learn more about. So um, just kind of diving in and doing your own research not only helps with your intellectual wellness, but it also connects to what we were talking previously about learning new things. Um, this helps you to develop new ideas and it helps you to discover new ways and new views of doing things that you might have never thought about before. So um, I really enjoy research. I think it's a fun thing uh, to do just because, you know, there's there's so many new um, things out there where it's really, really great to learn. And it's really actually quite nice to get a broadened perspective on a lot of different things and, you know, learn something you might have not known before. So that is tip number five on how to care for your intellectual wellness. And then finally, tip number six is studying another language. So the Cleveland Clinic suggests getting educated can help support our intellectual wellness. Uh, Cleveland Clinic says that by working challenging jobs, going back to school, taking classes, getting a degree, learning a new language, um, actually can decrease the chances of mental decline. So, um, so, you know, take a try, take a, take an opportunity to try studying something like a new language. It helps to support learning something new, but it also connects you with learning about different cultures like we talked about a couple of slides ago. So has anybody here ever studied a, a language before or is fluent in another language? I'm just curious if anybody wants to share that in chat or unmute themselves. Spanish, awesome. German and French, fabulous. German, Spanish, yeah. The great thing that um, you guys have probably heard before, oh, sign language, that's awesome. I've always wanted to learn sign language. There's actually um, a member on my team who is the um, sign language interpreter um, for Bronson. And it's just so, such a beautiful language. Espanol Tambien. Yes, that's fabulous. Thank you, everybody. These are wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all of these in the chat. Um, learning a new language is really fun and it's a it's a really great way to um to kind of help with that um that intellectual wellness and to kind of support and learn about different cultures. So awesome. Thank you everybody for sharing. Okay. Now we're gonna take a quick break again and we are gonna jump to our next brain exercise. So this brain exercise is called Muffin Memory Match. So how this works is I'm gonna choose a button or two buttons or whatever, and I'm gonna see if you guys can guess which of the other buttons matches. So you know those memory games where you like flip the cards and you try and match the two pictures? That's what we're gonna be doing right now. So 
I'm going to actually show all of these to you right now so you can kind of get a quick glance at them. And then we're going to reset. Them. So, what do you think? I'm going to click number two. Who knows which card I should flip over next? Number six. Look at you, Pamela. Nice work. All right, good job. All right, I'm going to flip over card number one. Who knows which card we need to flip over to match this one? Three. Number three. Nice, everybody got it. Good job, everybody. Fabulous. And then that leaves us with this one. Five. Yes. Nice. All right, you guys are pretty good. These are great, um, great ways to kind of, uh, kind of uh, challenge your memory and help to get to know that. So, um, plus they just look delicious, right? These muffins look really good. I'm super hungry this morning. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Okay. So now we are gonna jump in transition to what is brain health. So we were just learning about intellectual wellness and now we're gonna be talking about brain health and wellness. So brain health is the state of brain functioning across cognitive, sensory, social, emotional, behavior, and motor domain, allowing a person to realize their full potential over the life course, irrespective of the, of the presence or absence of disorders from World Health Organization. So, Caring for our brain health, tip number one. So of course, when we come to our classes, we always gotta bring in physical activity, right? So caring for your brain health, one way you can do that is by moving your body. So if you've been on our classes before, you know that physical activity is very important. So it helps to improve our strength, our balance, our flexibility. It can help prevent chronic diseases. It helps to move blood through your body and decrease stress. It can improve your mood helps you to think and learn better. It feels good, helps you to sleep better, helps you to maintain a healthy weight, build and maintain healthy bones and muscles and joints and more. But it does not have to be boring. So like I've told before, my passion is to make sure that people or encourage people to find ways to move their bodies that's fun for them, fun for the individual and celebrates what your body can do. So adults should try to get at least 30 minutes of physical activity each day, but it does not have to be in one sitting. So you can break that up throughout the day. So you can start at three minutes in the morning and then um, right when you wake up, maybe do some yoga and then after lunch, take a 10 minute walk. And then, you know, in the afternoon, maybe you wanna do some stretches or running around. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. And it doesn't have to be in that one sitting. So you can divide that up into multiple minute increments throughout the day totally fine. And making sure that you are finding ways that move your body in that are fun for you. So dancing, swimming, hiking, yard work, playing outdoor games, biking, obstacle courses, Zumba I see in the chat. Yeah. Finding what makes you happy. Silver sneakers. Yeah. Finding what makes you happy, what makes you excited, what makes you want to move your body because moving your body should be something that we enjoy. So something that you want to do that makes you happy and brings you joy. Now, the Cleveland Clinic says that regular endurance activities or regular endurance exercises like running or swimming or biking can actually help to foster um, new brain cell growth and preserve existing brain cells. Lifting weights or using a resistance band, according to the Cleveland Clinic, can also um, build muscle and strengthen your bone, but also boost your brain power, improve your mood, enhance your concentration abilities, and increase your decision making skills. So, as you can see, moving our body is not just good for our, you know, bones and muscles and everything, but it's good, or you know, it's it's just good for every part of your body, right? So, moving your body is a great way to um to increase and care for your brain health. All right, walking. Yeah, Pamela, I love walking too. It's so fun, especially when it's sunny outside. Like yesterday, that sunshine was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> okay, caring for your brain health tip number two is managing stress. So we know that managing stress is good for all parts of our body as well. But, and something that um, all of us go through in our life. So, you know, stress is just a, a something that happens to each of us, right? But how we manage it can really affect our brain's health. So again, according to the Cleveland Clinic, they say that meditation is actually really good for your brain health. Um, research has shown that regular meditation helps to keep your brain healthier and happier for years to come. 
So there's lots of different ways you can manage stress. Um, finding, again, a way to manage stress that works for you. I've recently got very interested in massages. I had never really had one before, and then I got one, and I'm like, wow, this is absolutely a fabulous way to manage my stress. But some people, you know, just taking a walk is a great way to manage your stress. Um, you know, doing some light stretches, talking with somebody, you know, there's lots of different ways you can manage stress. So finding what it is that you need. Oh, breathe that mindfulness. Yes, that's wonderful. So definitely taking the time out of your day to make sure that you're managing your stress for overall health and brain health. Um, it's, it's very, very important. And I mean, life can be kind of stressful sometimes. So how we figure out how to manage that stress is how we can help improve our health for many years to come. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tai Chi moving meditation. Awesome prayer. Yeah. I love hearing all these things in the chat. Thank you so much, everybody. It's so great to get all these different ideas because also, like I've said before, it's so great because in these classes, I learn from you while you guys learn from me. It's like a whole, you know, a whole connection there. So it's, it's really great. Thank you everybody for sharing these things. All right. Brain health tip number three. Of course, we can't get through any of our presentation without talking about healthy eating, right? Caring for our brain health tip number three is choosing healthy foods. So, um, you know, eating right gives you nutrients that you need to have make, help you make it through your day. So eating a healthy diet full of colors gives you energy. Um, and those small steps can help lead to healthy rewards. So, you know, if healthy eating is something that is not super easy for you, or it doesn't come naturally to you, or it's just really hard, you know, there's some things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. We always say taking small steps is a great way to help you lead to a healthier life and lead to those healthy rewards. So even if you can't, you know, get in your vegetables for the day because you don't love it, you know, by themselves or anything like that, um, you know, trying to add healthier foods to foods that you already enjoy. So maybe you absolutely love macaroni and cheese, maybe um, throwing some broccoli into that macaroni and cheese, or maybe, you know, eating a smoothie in the morning is a great way to get some fruits and vegetables in your diet as well. So there's lots of ways to kind of incorporate those healthy foods, right? So choosing a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grain foods, lean protein, um, those are all good, healthy, um, healthy choices. So um, it is, um, research has shown that the um, Mediterranean style diet that's rich in fish and whole grains and green leafy vegetables and olives and nuts can actually help to maintain your brain health and can actually um, help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Um, there's actually going to be a class coming up, so be on the lookout for it. Um, in May, I believe it's called Choosing Mediterranean in May, I think is what it's called. So be on the lookout. That's going to be a new class that's coming up um, in May. Um, so that uh, that research was um, from Area Agency. Um, it's really uh, ag Agency on Aging. It's um, really great, important things to kind of learn how to increase those healthy foods into our diet. So making sure you're focusing on variety of healthy foods each day, um, drinking your water. Uh, there's lots of different ways to make sure that we're choosing those healthy foods and drink that's best for our overall health and our brain health. I just love this picture. I thought this was a beautiful picture. <laughs> All right. We're almost coming to um, the end of our presentation. So I want to know from you guys now, what is your favorite healthy food? Anybody want to share in the chat? Blueberries, yes, fabulous. Especially in the summertime when they're in season, I love them. Mm. Smoothies, cucumbers, grapes, banana, toasted nuts, wonderful. Yes, roasted cauliflower, mm. great ideas. Fresh fruit, definitely. I have to say my favorite healthy food is peanut butter. I absolutely adore peanut butter. I'm pretty sure I eat it every single day. <laughs> um, salmon, berries, and melon. And Susan, is cheese considered a healthy food? So cheese is a dairy product and it gives us some calcium and some vitamin D for sure. And so the only thing with cheese is that it is high in saturated fat, which is the kind of fat part on our heart. However, like we say in every class, there is room for everything in your diet. And honestly, 
chickpeas is a fine food because it's got some really good vitamins and minerals um, in there for you to enjoy. Um, just making sure that we're eating it in moderation because of the saturated fat that um, that cheese has. But otherwise, yes, it is. It's considered a healthy food and a great food to add as a combination food. So maybe, you know, some cheese and vegetables or some cheese and some whole grain crackers. Those are all really good, healthy snack ideas. So yeah, that's a good, healthy snack. Thank you. All right, vegetables, peanut butter, are, are any of the supplements any good? So I can't really speak on that um, because I am uh, not, you know, I guess, uh, trained or educated in that specifically for supplements. So my only suggestion for supplements is talking to your doctor and um, talking to them about what is right for you and your individual circumstances. So, um, you know, I, I personally take a vitamin, a one a day vitamin, um, just in case I'm missing any of those vitamins from my foods. Um, but as far as specific supplements, um, I would definitely talk to your doctor to see what they recommend as um, good supplements for you. Good question, thank you. Um, and then nuts to my smoothies, yeah, awesome. Thank you everybody, these are great, these are great. Okay. Tip for caring for your brain health, um, number four, sleep, getting enough sleep. So sleep is really important because sleep helps our brain to function properly. When we sleep, it forms new pathways, um, which helps us to learn and remember information. Studies have shown that sleep improves learning and your problem solving skills, and it helps you to pay attention, make decisions, and be creative. So getting Getting enough sleep is different for everybody. Um, everybody needs a different amount of sleep depending on lots of different factors. Um, but trying to, you know, trying to get you know, six to eight hours is a good, um, a good average for the average person, a good way to kind of, you know, look for it. But definitely talking with your doctor to see if there are any recommendations for you as a personalized individual. Um, lots of different ways you can help improve your sleep. So sleeping in a dark room, um, making sure that you're limiting your blue light exposure so you know your screen time um, can help you to sleep better when you limit that. Um, making sure that your environment that you're sleeping in is um, relaxing and comfortable for you, a cool dark room. So lots of different ways that you can try and improve your sleep. All right. And tip number five, making sure that we are staying connected. We're gonna uh, bring up Cleveland Clinic again. Um, so the Cleveland Clinic says that a rich social network provides sources of support, reduces stress, combats depression, and enhances intellectual stimulation. Studies have shown that those with social interaction within their community experience the slowest rates of memory decline. Um, so having a purpose in life has shown significant protective effects against age-related cognitive impairment. So there are lots of different ways that you can connect with other people. You can join groups or organizations. Um, you never know who you might meet. You might find your next best friend, you know, at different groups or organizations, um, you know, family and friends, spending some quality time with them, whether that's calling, picking up the phone and giving them a phone call, going on a coffee date with them. Um, just making sure that you're kind of staying connected. Um, when you have that um, that connectedness, that connection with other people, um, gives you a sense of strength and um, belonging and purpose and support. So staying connected is really good for our brain health as well. Um, again, having this these connections can really protect against the effects of age-related impairments, according to Cleveland. So. Um, yeah, so lots of different ways you can stay connected. And then I see here, okay, is TV considered screen time? Unfortunately, yes, it is, um, which is totally fine every now and then, but we recommend, you know, shutting off screen times about an hour or so before bed to kind of get your brain ready for sleep. So good question. Thank you. All right, I've got three more tips for you. All right, tip number six is practice mental stimulation exercises. So there are lots of opportunities for mental stimulation. Um, the mental stimulation exercises um, help to build up and work out our brains, basically. So doing um, problem-solving uh, questions such as words, 
or math problems, so do go yes, Pamela. Um, mental effort activities like drawing, um, those are good examples of basically working out your brain. So practicing mental stimulation exercises. Um, it's really fun. There's so many different things you can do um, to do that. And we're actually gonna do one here um, in a moment before we, or we're gonna do that after we finish our last couple tips. Okay, so I wanna know from you, what does your favorite brain training exercise, teaching, learning, you know, all of these great things. You've got Sudoku, you've got different games that kind of, um, you know, increase your uh, like ability to kind of think. I don't know, my favorite is categories. I love categories. You really have to think on that one. You gotta think of a word in a category that starts with a specific letter under a certain time. So I love that one, but there's so many different, um, so many different brain tra brain training exercises. Reading, yeah, that's a great one. Playing different games, yeah, learning new things, yeah. That job involves a lot of problem solving. Definitely problem solving is brain training. Awesome, learning new things, reading, Wordle, Sudoku, yeah, fabulous, Scrabble, yes, all, all great, all great. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing. Okay. Tip number seven for you to care for our brain health, visiting your doctor. So want to stay up to date and connected with your doctor about your own health needs. So doctors are really important because they can help you control risks and manage medical conditions that actually can lead to brain decline. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different things that kind of can lead to brain decline. Um, there are... Uh, Medications and how you take them, if you're taking them incorrectly, um, you know, blood pressure, weight, um, lots of different things that kind of can lead to that. So by keeping up to date with your needs and speaking and listening to your doctor, you can help keep your brain healthy for many years to come. And that's tipped out to you by the Area Agency on Aging as well. Um, so it's really um, a great thing to, or National Institute on Aging, excuse me. Um, so there's lots of different ways, things we can do to, um, make sure that we are controlling these different medical conditions to keep our brain healthy. And finally, to care for brain health, tip number eight, protecting your head. So a lot of people think that helmets are just for kids. I'm just curious. And if you don't want to share on the chat, you don't have to. Does anybody here wear a helmet when they go biking or roller skating or rollerblading or anything like that? Good, I'm seeing some yeses in the chat. That's awesome. Yeah, good, yes. Wearing one and using chainsaw, yes, yes. There are so many important reasons why we want to protect our head. So I'm really glad to see this in the chat. Um, and it's okay, you know, um, I see yes. Um, I see you say no, but I should. I get that. Sometimes, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's been, you know, some criticism from, you know, people and sometimes it feels uncomfortable and whatnot, but it's never too late to start doing things like that, right? So maybe, um, you know, you've, you know, been lucky enough that nothing has happened lately. So that's, you know, really great. But moving forward, if you want to include um, a helmet on your head, it's a great way to protect your brain because helmets are not just for kids. Helmets are also for adults, right? Injuries can happen at any time of your life. They can happen when you're a baby, they can happen when you're a toddler, when you're a kid, when you're a teenager, when you're an adult, when you're an older adult, any time of your life injuries can occur. Um, so Harvard Health reminds us that head injuries can increase the risk of cognitive impairment. So caring for our brain health, a way we can do that is to make sure that we are protecting our head. Wearing a helmet when we're biking, um, rollerblading, roller skating. I saw, you know, uh, can't remember who it was in the chat, but they wear one when they're using their chainsaw. Yes, when you're doing any type of like construction work or anything like that, there are lots of different opportunities to make sure that you are wearing the safety protective equipment to make sure that you are staying healthy, you are staying safe, your brain is staying safe and healthy and uh, all those good things. So definitely trying to remember to protect your head. All right, we've got our last brain exercise. And our last brain exercise is a crossword puzzle. So I'm gonna bring us to um, the New York Times crossword, mini crossword puzzle. And I am curious um, if 
you guys want to just type in the chat if you guys want to unmute yourself if anybody has any great ideas but i'll read through some of these questions and then you guys can think what you think what or put what you want into the chat or unmute yourself or however it might be so the first thing we're going to do is across one nice snob. that is correct that is correct yes snob good job guys all right we're going to do down one what a beach umbrella provides any shade. guesses shade shade yes good oops let me make sure i don't get the wrong one there we go awesome all right five across in quotes to please slogan on some new jersey license place this one i so i really struggled with this one i had a hard time with this any guesses hard to please okay good guesses <laughs> i don't think it's hard to please but that was a good guess we're doing five across any other guesses share to please oh gail that is close that is very very close hmm <laughs> Five across. All right. Five across is sure to please. That one I had a really hard time with. All right. Two down standard behaviors. Norms. Norms. Good. All right. Nice. You guys are good at this. Six across. Pasta, bread, etc. Carbs. Look at you guys. Yes, carbs. All right. How about Three down, planet's path. Orbit, Orbit. yes, Orbit. nice work guys. Man, you guys are good at this. All right, number seven across, fess up. Admit. Look at you guys, oh my goodness. You guys are doing so much better on this than I did. I had such a hard time. All right, number eight across, mark hitting silence on a music staff. Hmm. Rest. rest yep rest good work look at that all right pretty good score you guys got everything nice work all right thank you for participating in that uh in that little uh brain game i gotta reshare my screen yes all right uh, here. All right. So you doing a crossword puzzle is a great way to kind of get your brain flowing as well. Another great brain exercise. So that was really good. Good job, guys. Okay. Here are some brain health resources for you. Um, so when you get the summary sheet, um, you'll get an email um, that says you can visit bronsonhealth.com slash bronson eats. Um, that will share these uh, that you can click on and then you can go to that uh, web page and you will be able to download a summary of this class. These resources will be on that summary sheet as well. So if you are interested in exploring a little bit more about ways to help your brain and intellectual health, you can visit any of these if you want to kind of take a deeper dive. So just want to, in summary, discuss what intellectual and uh, brain health is, learning ways to take care of and boost that, practicing a few brain exercises, and leaving with a list of brain resources. So that is all that I have for you guys today. We finished a little bit earlier today, um, so you guys get like 15 extra minutes back on your calendar. But I really appreciate you guys coming to this class today. I hope you found it enjoyable and helpful. And um give you some um, thoughts and ideas for ways that you can boost your brain health. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. Feel free to um, take a, pay attention to some of these uh, things coming across your email for some of our upcoming classes. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. I'll stay on if you have any extra questions.